Good afternoon, class. Today we are in Chapter 4, Section 4. and um, We will be looking at the case of where we have two sides of a triangle congruent to two other sides in a triangle. Last time what we saw is that if I have three sides in one triangle match up to three sides in another triangle, they have to be congruent. But today what we're focusing on is all the cases of where I have two sides being congruent to two other sides over here. Now, the angle could be between the two sides. It could be not between the two sides. And we were wondering what works. Well, if we look, based on the title of this section, it says prove triangles congruent by side, angle, side, and hypotenuse leg. I don't see anything that says side, side, angle. So I'm guessing that one probably doesn't work. The first one that we have here, uh, triangles that have side, angle, side matchup are congruent. Side angle side congruence posture it says if two sides and the included angle of one triangle are congruent to two sides and the included angle of a second triangle, then the two triangles are congruent. <sighs> Big statement, right? Well, two sides and an included angle. So if I look here, what if I had this segment, segment AB, and segment AC? What would be the included angle of those two segments? Well, for me, I think it would make sense to say angle A here because angle or segment AB and segment AC form angle A. So it makes sense to say included. It's in between the two angles. Uh, same thing over here. If I had segment DE and segment DF, well, then angle D would be the included angle. It's between the two segments. Um, so let's just say I had those two being congruent. Then those would be the included angle. Included angle because it's between the two congruent sides. If I have those being congruent, now I have side, angle, side, side, angle, side matching up. These two triangles have to be congruent. I just have to be a little bit careful about order. Otherwise, I'm fine. So, two sides and an angle. Because it goes side, angle, side in the actual triangle, though, side, angle, side, I'm good to go. If it would have went side, side, angle, I would not be. All right, so it causes these two triangles, triangle BAC, to be congruent to triangle EDF. Now, the reason I went in that order is because segment BA and segment ED are congruent. So I started with those two. Then I said, all right, segment AC and segment DF are congruent. So I ended with those two. That's just the way I went. All right, first example. What if I just gave you a whole bunch of pictures and said, decide whether enough information is given to prove that your triangles are congruent using the side, angle, side, congruence postulate? There's three of them. Go ahead and try now. All right, number one, I would say no. Why? It goes side, side, angle. Side, side, angle. While, yes, those that might be one that we eventually learn about, um... It's not side, angle, side. And it's not side, side, side. And those are the only two I know. So it doesn't fall on anything I know. I'm going to say no, I can't prove it. Two, if I look, if I'm looking at triangle ABC and triangle CDA, I think I could get these two triangles to match up because I have a side, angle, side. And if I look here, side, angle, side side. So this triangle up here, triangle ABC, uh, and triangle CDA will be congruent because of side angle side. Yes. Now if I look at angle or number three here, I notice that I have a side and a side matchup, a side and a side matchup, <sighs> but I need either the third side matching up or side side side, or I'm going to need to somehow show that the included angle angle ACB and angle ECD, so this angle here and this angle here, are somehow congruent. Wait a second. Aren't they across a point or a vertex or a vertice um, of two straight lines? In other words, isn't angle ACB, this angle right here, and angle ECD, this angle right here, aren't they vertical angles and have to be congruent? Well, yeah. So if I have those two angles being congruent, even though it's not marked by side, angle, side, side, angle, side, I have triangle ACB 
convert to triangle ECD. So, number two and number three, I can prove our congruent using the side angle side. Number one is no. Example two, what if I gave you two triangles and then I start giving you random pieces of information? What is the third piece of information to show that the triangle is congruent using the side angle side congruence postulate? Well, the first one, segment AB, this one here, and segment DE, so it's right above each other. Okay, segment AC and segment DF, okay, so I have these two segments and these two segments being congruent to each other. Well, if I have the angle between them, the included angle, uh, I'll have it. So angle A and angle D have to be congruent. Number one, angle A is congruent to angle D. Side, angle, side. What if they gave me angle A, angle D, and they told me that segment AC and segment DF were congruent? Well, let's see. Side, angle, and if I go in order, the next side would be segment DE, and then over here, side, angle, side, segment AB, so segment AB and segment DE have to be congruent. All right, number two and number one were essentially the same problem, just I mixed up what you were given. Well, I did the same thing for number three, except for now it's going to be an entirely different answer. What if I told you that angle F and angle C were congruent, and that segment AC and segment DF were congruent? Well, if I go in order, side, angle, side, so I need segment BC. Side, angle, side, I need segment EF. So this one is segment BC is congruent to segment EF. <sighs> Number four. Uh, you should be able to do this one by yourself at this point. Um, quickly looking, though. I see that I'm going to need to say angle blank is congruent to angle blank because if I'm going to do side angle side, I need at least one angle. And I'm already given two sides. So they say segment AB and segment DE are congruent, segment BC and segment EF are congruent. So the angle between my two pairs would be angle B and angle E. Angle B is congruent to angle E. So angle A is congruent to angle D. Segment AB is congruent to segment DE. Uh, segment BC is congruent to segment EF. And last but not least, segment B, or sorry, angle A. Uh, angle B is congruent to angle E. All right. The next concept, uh, you have to be a little bit careful how you organize this. Uh, triangles that have side-side angle match up aren't necessarily congruent. The easy way to remember this one that it doesn't work is that if we would do angle side side, um, we end up spelling something we shouldn't with our letters. Uh, so that's why we'll only refer to this one as side side angle or SSA. Um, it does not work. And here's the reason why. I can form two triangles using this angle, this side, and this side. Now this is true in this triangle. This side is congruent to this one. This side is congruent to this one. And this angle is congruent to this angle. But those triangles are clearly not congruent. Um, the angle between this one and this one. This one looks obtuse. This one looks acute. Corresponding sides aren't matching up. Because this angle and this angle are corresponding. Because they're both between the 1 and the 2 tally. And if this one's obtuse and this one's acute, there's no way these triangles are congruent. So, side angle side and the triangles are not congruent. Uh, I have it match up, but they aren't necessarily congruent. Now, is that saying it can't be congruent? No. If I have side side angle, there is a possibility they are congruent. However, they don't have to be. And that's why you don't have a side-side angle congruence theorem or congruence postulate, is because there is a possibility for it to be wrong. Um, there is one exception, and that's what we're going to be talking about next. And now, the only time this actually works out to be perfect uh, is the case of a right angle here. All right, so what you see up here is if we look at the left, left one here, this side right here, going with the arrow, this side right here, 
the one with the arrow. And this angle right here are the only things that cannot change in this. No matter what I move right here, those three things that were changed, the length of this segment here, the length of this segment here, and this angle. So by side-side angle, these things should be congruent if there was a side-side angle postulate. Now the first triangle I can make is one that's right here. This side, this side, and this angle match up. But if I would move this over, eventually it crosses the line again. This side, this side, and this angle match up. But those two triangles are clearly not congruent. Side side angle has to fail because there's two possible triangles for side side angle. There is one exception to this, and that's if I have a right angle, side, and side. So if I look, in this case, this length right here, this length right here, and this angle all match up. But with a right angle, what happens when I flip it all the way over is that this becomes the same exact triangle over here. It's just a mirror image. So if I bring it all the way over here, it works. But instead of calling it side-side angle, because there's a possibility to accidentally go angle side-side and you know, accidentally spell something that we shouldn't, um, we decided to instead call it hypotenuse leg. So let's talk about the parts of a right triangle. What is a hypotenuse? What is a leg?